Players, how you doing? Welcome back to Players Guide. On this episode of Players Guide, I'm going to be covering six more really great new games that have a retro style to them you should check out. So much for stopping by the channel. On this episode, I'm going to be talking about some new retro games, but you can check out the retro gaming news on this channel every month to find out about more of these games as they're being released and a bunch of different homebrew games and things that are going on within the retro gaming and collecting communities. So, to start things off, I'm going to talk about a game released in tandem with a movie. This game is The Mummy, Demastered by Universal Studios and Way Forward. Excellent game. I like a lot of the stuff that Way Forward does. And here's the thing here. It's Demastered because instead of coming some fully modernized graphics that have some sort of sandbox type gameplay and puzzle solving, no. They took this idea and they made it a retro game, a Metroid style uh, retro game where you're exploring and the different stages and sections of the game are quite clear and different. You also acquire different power-ups throughout the game, skills, abilities. There's a good assortment of different enemies that you'll encounter, boss fights. It's all here, it's all great. Now I haven't played through the entire game because it is quite the large game. There's a lot to do here and a lot to explore, including secret areas. But I would recommend it, and it is something that you can really commit some time to and enjoy as a larger game if you, you know, you're really into that style of exploration retro games. The next game I want to talk about is called Narita Boy. So Narita Boy is a pretty interesting game and the graphics aren't so much retro per se, although they definitely give off a retro 80s vibe. And that's why I put it on this list. So Narita Boy is a game about a guy who was born in Japan, Narita Japan. That's a place I didn't know about it until I played this game. And this game kind of tells his story through his memories, which you acquire um, and recover in order to rebuild a program that this guy designed. Now you are a randomly selected player who has been sucked into this game, trod style, in order to save this digital world. And there's a whole bunch of interesting things going on and stories within other stories but the main premise of this game is that you need to recover the creator's memories in order to recover the program and stop the viruses from taking over this game and save this digital world. You are Narita Boy. Again, there's quite a bit of exploration, a little bit of backtracking here, power-ups and different abilities that you acquire throughout the stages, boss fights, and lots of interesting characters. I love a bunch of the sound effects and the music in this game is awesome. Next up is Retro Highway. So this is a high speed racing sort of game. You're not really racing against the computer or anyone else. You're really just collecting points and trying to last as long as you can. The more points you collect and the longer you last, you're able to then purchase new motorcycles, riders, and stages in the store. And this can be done uh, quickly by accomplishing different tasks that the game asks of you. So as you advance through the stages, you're asked to complete harder and harder tasks. And as this is done, you unlock more and more of the game. So. The stages aren't really a game where you're going to play through them, just like the last two or sections that you play through. This is a game that has more of an arcade style to it, a modernized arcade style where you play for the high score, the points, the challenges that get you the bigger points, 
and then you redeem those points in order to unlock new areas, drivers, bikes, you know, different things in the game. But the thing I like most about it is not only is it this new modern retro style, but it's a game that you can easily just pick up and play anytime. You don't have to sit down. Uh, there's no story uh, that you have to uh, become involved with and follow along. You just play it whenever you'd like. Another game that I like to play whenever I like is Thunder Flash. And Thunder Flash, this is a game that reminds me a lot of Iron Tank or Commando on the NES. I'm a big NES guy, so I really like those NES games and throw out different NES examples around when I talk about these games. So the deal here is it's a more modern game and you know it it has some quirkiness to it that I find quite humorous and you might too if you play this one. It's a pretty cheap game and like I said this is another one that you could just pick up and play pretty easily. However this game does have different stages that you progress and traverse through and like those NES games you're going to be picking up different items that don't necessarily stay with you. Um, they're timed or you switch different items. And you know, this one is just a lot of fun. And for the price point that you're probably gonna find this one at, especially if you get it on sale, it, it's great. So go check this one out. Another pick up and play game is Taco Tan. So Taco Tan is a shoot 'em up. And this shoot 'em up, you play as a squid. This has some very Japanese animated undertones here uh, that I'm picking up anyways. I'm not so much into the whole Japanese culture and anime and that stuff, but this game seems to find its way in that category based on my perception of what that is all about. And, you know, this is another one that can be picked up pretty cheap especially if you get it on sale it's fun to play you can pick it up and play anytime and it is a shoot 'em up with power-ups and boss fights and everything you would expect including you know where in some shoot 'em up games I really enjoy this where if you get a certain combo of enemies in order they'll give you a power-up or extra points that's in this game and it's something that kind of switches up this list and gives you a little bit more variety of games here that I'm recommending. The next game here is going to sound very familiar to you. This is Super Cyborg. Super Cyborg is going to look very familiar. It looks a lot like Contra or Super C. And it plays a lot like that too. But you know what? That is not a bad thing. At first, going into this game, I thought it was going to be uh, kind of a cheap ripoff because I am such a big fan of the Contra series, especially uh, the original games, the first few games that came out for this series. I believe those are the best ones, in my opinion, and I think a lot of other people would agree. And this game replicates it, but it does a really good job of it. It is different, but it is very much the same. So if you enjoy playing those games, you're surely going to enjoy this game too. Um, and it is not a cheap ripoff. It is a ripoff, but a very, very similar ripoff that plays very well and much like the original Contra games. So as a Contra fan, I'm telling you this is very enjoyable. As well, I actually like what they've done here with the cyborgs and the different mutant aliens. They look really cool. Um, the graphics and music, there's nothing wrong with them at all. It's exactly what you would expect from a retro style Contra game, and it's great. So thanks guys so much for tuning into this video. If you are interested in any of these games, please go check them out. Consider giving the video a like and subscribing to the channel because I will be coming out with more videos just like this one. So stay tuned for those as well as covering a bunch of other videos on video game collecting and other retro games. Until next time, I will catch you on the flip side.